Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that it does not work. You got some fans that are disappointed, mad, jumping off the bandwagon, and everything else. And you know what? We have ourselves to blame for a lot of this because we have fallen into the hype that everything is hunky-dory, that everything is on cruise control. We're going to roll right into the Super Bowl, the playoffs. You know, we're going to have MVP, Comeback Player of the Year, and Rookie Defensive Player of the Year, and Defensive Player of the Year. All of these things, you know. We got Diggs with the seven interceptions and stuff, you know. Can he break the 14 by Dick Knight Train Lane? We got Micah Parsons already. Well, he probably already is the Defensive Rookie of the Year. Getting two and a half sacks yesterday. Yeah, I think that one might be. And Comeback Player of the Year, I'm pretty sure it's going to end up being Dak Prescott at least. And then, of course, I don't know about MVP. But expectations are the building blocks of resentment. And unfortunately, when you start winning, everybody starts putting those expectations on you, warranted or not. It's just the way it is. And in society, as much as they love to pump you up, they really rather tear your ass back down because that gets the headlines. So, problem for the Cowboys. The major problem is where everything begins and ends. And that's the offensive line. Tyron Smith is one of the best tackles in football when he's out there and healthy. Problem is, is you don't know when he's going to be healthy. And the Cowboys, they got too cute. Cowboys have had so many different dealings on the offensive line this year. You remember Zach Martin was out for COVID, and we had Connor McGovern come in and play well. We had Lyle Collins go out, and Terrence Steele became the new Superman and took up and was playing maybe even better than Lyle Collins was. And we just figured it doesn't matter what happens. You know, when we took Tyron Smith out, we had Ty Naseki out there, and he wasn't quite as good as what people had hoped. And um, they figured, we'll just take Steele, and we'll just move him to the other side because he can automatically do that. Well, here's the thing that's interesting here. As I sit here, and you're seeing me do the same thing over and over, right? You know, the first couple of racks that I made were really difficult. It took a lot of time to do them. But I've learned from doing these over and over a couple of different tricks. One of these, see this little thing right here? This is exactly what I need these wings to be. So easily, I can take this, lock it in place, and every time, every one of these that I'm marking will all be exactly the same. <clears throat> I learned that from doing it over and over again. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> because it's harder to take one, try and get exactly in the right place, and then mark it because it sometimes slips. But I learned tricks. Another thing I learned to do is came up with this little thing. So after I cut them, it takes five of these for one rack to make sure that they're all exactly the same. It holds them all together. So I can take them on the sander 
and I can sand these so they're all perfectly the same. It's consistency. It's learning to do the same thing over and over again. And as you do it, the more you do it, it becomes second nature. So I can pick this up while I'm talking to you, provided I can find my pencil, and I can continue to do this on cruise control without thinking about it because I've done it so many times. And herein lies the problem of what happened yesterday. I know that you get sold that linemen, they're not skilled players. You, you know, a wide receiver is a skilled player, a quarterback's a skilled player, a running back is, not a lineman. Well, I tell you what, you get a guy who's 270 pounds that can run a 4740, and he is trying to get to the quarterback, and you're the only thing in between them. There's some skill there. Can't be I could just stand there. It doesn't work. Players are so fast and have so many different moves and stuff, you have to be able to recognize it and be able to react. Now, I'm going to do a little experiment here. You can see me do this constantly with my right hand. I'm going to try and reverse this. I did it, but now I have to think about it. I, I don't know how to hold the pencil right. And you can see how that wandered a little bit there. It's not the same. Yeah, I, I, it, 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 it goes, but I really have to concentrate and think on how to do it as opposed to doing it the way I've been used to. The way I'm used to, it's easy. It's hard to go from one side to the other. And here's the thing. If you've been playing right tackle, okay? Center's over there, the guard. You're right here. Let me turn the camera down a little bit here. Let's see if we can do this. You're right here. That first move on that pass rush, you're used to stepping with this leg. You're used to having your hands out here. You're used to being able to get that hand on the body this way and be able to wheel around, be able to move your feet. Well, guess what? Now that I've been used to having my eye out here looking at that guy right there and being prepared to step this way just like when I just changed my hands now I'm sorry I don't move real well because my knees are shot but now the center's over here now even though I've been used to leaning and looking at everything over there now it's the opposite complete opposite you may not have the, the, the strength that you have with that right arm because you're not using it in the same motion. You're not used to stepping over here. And that's what I saw with Terrence Steele was he kept getting beat around the outside, around the outside. All the Buffalo girls go around the outside. He wasn't as quick with that left foot. So he was lagging. So by the time he took that step, the defender was already past his shoulder. This arm could not stop that speed rush. So the Cowboys got too cute and figured that, hey, he's a tackle. We can just change hands, flip him around, and it'll be fine. And it's not fine. They may have almost been better either keeping Ty Naseki over there and Terrence Steele where he had been playing because Terrence Steele still is only a second year player. He had 13 games last year and seven games this year. He is still very, very new and very, very raw. <coughs> and so <coughs> throwing him around and just figuring that he's going to be the guy 
that can just do anything right now was a miscalculation. Because what the Cowboys did was, Lyle Collins being rusty was now put on that side. It wasn't quite ready. And then you put Terrence Steele on the other side and he wasn't ready. So you took a side that was locked down and playing good. Had you left Terrence Steele over there, you might've been okay. You may have been better off having to make Lyle Collins because this way you are only risking one position being bad. As it stood yesterday, we had two positions that couldn't control the outside. And because of that, everything went to crap. Zeke Elliott didn't have the holes. Couldn't get the runs for Tony Pollard either. Dak, under distress, coming back and being rusty, didn't have the same time. And because the passes were being hurried, Time goes off with the receivers. And the passes were off as well because we were trying to hurry up and make plays. And so this is a case of when you think about uh, the knee bones connected to the thigh bone and the thigh bones connected to the tailbone, all of these things have cascading effects as they go through. And the offensive line, as much as people don't really pay attention to the blocking, you know, they don't see the wars in the trenches. They look at the quarterback go back with the ball, or they look at the running back running through the holes. They don't pay attention to what goes on in the line. And as the theory goes, for each action, there's an opposite reaction. Problem was, and as we've learned, when the offensive line plays great, if we just bowl right over people, the opposite is true. The defensive line plays great, Stops the offensive line. The offense doesn't bolt through. So that's where I think the main focus will be this week is getting the offensive line together and figuring out where Tyron Smith is. I'm concerned because um, the bone spur, if that is the only injury that we're concerned with, the only way you fix a bone spur is surgery. If it's an ankle and conjecture and, 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 and or together with the bone spur, then that's a different thing because you get past the ankle sprain and the other part is pain management um, or surgery. So this is the key right here. It's Tyron Smith. Um, it's just the key. And so look at the offensive line. Cowboys got to get that squared away before the next game. I'm Mark Holmes. Well, I got to get over here on the bandsaw, start cutting these suckers out here and get them ready for you guys. Hope you guys tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. We will go ahead and dissect the body and figure out how we get back on track. See you soon.